I've been mentoring in schools in the Apps for Good program for years now, <clears throat> and the discussion that I see happening over and over and over again is that the kids sit there with the teachers and they say, okay, so we've got this app, what are we gonna do with it? Should it be free, should it be paid? And typically, it's the kids who say, oh, it should be paid, and the teachers say, no, 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 it should be free, okay? And that's really no way to think about how you commercialize your app and the business model that you're gonna drive. And the fundamental thought that I want to impress on all of you is that there is no free lunch, okay? So when somebody builds an app or works in a business, money needs to come from somewhere, always. The bills need to get paid, people need to get paid, okay? There is no free in business model. It doesn't work. The question is always who will pay for what? And some of you may say, okay, well, but Jens, look, even the guy who invented the internet, right, Tim Berners-Lee, there he is, he's given the internet to all of us, and it's completely free, and everybody can use it, right? So clearly, there is free in business models. It has to exist. He did it. And what they all forget is that he was paid by the government. Right? His business model was, I get paid for the by the government, and I then give away things for free, but somebody has paid the bill. So then people say, okay, so how do I do that? And in my mind, when I look at different businesses, I think there are three different ways in which you can make money. The first one is you get all of your users to pay, right? So for example, there are no free train rides. You go on a train, you get a ticket, you pay for it. Everybody is on a train, pays for it. The second model is to say, okay, I'll have lots of users of my product, but only some of them will pay, typically a small proportion, I don't know, 5%, 10%, something like that, okay? So great examples of that are things, online products that are free to use, like for example, Gmail, but if you're a business, then you need to pay for that, okay? We're gonna get into details of some of that. And the third model is, the users typically don't pay anything at all. None of them pay. Somebody else pays. Yeah. So those are the three top level ones. So what I wanna do today is help you get through this problem, which is, so how do I choose? Right, it's a bit like Indiana Jones, when he's there and he's trying to pick the right chalice, and if he picks the wrong one, he's gonna basically die. And it's actually true with businesses, that's what happens. If you pick the wrong business model, it's probably not gonna work. But it's actually quite as bad as that. So the, the key thing to understand is you shouldn't rush into that. You know, don't say within a five minute discussion, that's gonna be our business model, actually think it through. You know, choose a bit more wisely, a bit more like him. So let's go through. So when you have a situation where you want all of your users to pay, this is typically uh, when you have a situation where you're um, serving up a very high value add product or service where the vast majority of users are able and willing to pay for that product or service. So here are a couple of examples. For example, e-commerce business models. So when you go to Amazon and you buy something from Amazon, whether that's a physical good or it's a movie that you download or whatever it is, you know, all the people who derive value from Amazon pay Amazon. You know, I can't download, well, obviously I can, I can download maybe a free sample of a book, but I can't get a free toaster from Amazon. It doesn't work like that. Everybody who gets a toaster has to pay for it. Quite similar to that are marketplaces. Marketplaces are platforms where sellers and buyers are brought together, and both sellers and buyers typically have to pay. So classic examples are eBay or Etsy, where you can buy sort of more homemade goods and so on and so forth. Yeah. Obviously, Amazon also has a marketplace because there are third-party vendors selling on Amazon as well. A third model that's quite um, popular is an affiliate business model. For example, on the price comparison sites like Uswitch, or there are many others. You know, if you want to switch your electricity contract or something like that, you know, you have to swipe your credit card. And everybody who does that has to pay. There is no free switching. I don't get gas for free. Not how it works. Yeah. Quitco, again, very similar to that. Finally, there is an unending array of subscription businesses where practically everybody who, has to, who, who uh, uses those has to pay. So for example, um, Google Apps for Business. If I'm a business user, 
then I have to pay. I don't get a free, free Google Apps account. Maybe charities do, but you know, prof, you know, for for-profit businesses, they all have to pay. Um, there is, and what all of those free services I've put up here, Netflix and Evernote and Google Apps have in common is they typically give away the first month free of charge or something like that. But after that, you know, or they give away a certain allocation of storage or a certain number of items you can save for free. But after that, everybody who exceeds that either time or volume or something like that has to pay. The second model is, and the second type of model is some users have to pay. So what are those? So for example, you can have freemium subscriptions like Flickr or Spotify. I can use Flickr. Actually, I have a Flickr account. Yeah, I've never paid for it. I've had it for years. There are tens of millions of users who have free Spotify accounts. They have never paid for that. Yeah? And some users opt in to pay a subscription to Spotify because they derive additional benefits from that. Another good example are games. So Moshi Monsters or Angry Birds or anybody like that. You know, I've downloaded them. I've played them for free. I've never paid them a dime. Yeah? But other users choose to go for the paid version of this. Or some choose to purchase merchandise. Yeah? Angry Birds, birds, given as presents. Completely different business model. The game is free for all to play, but you can then choose whether you want to spend more money uh, on that product. Another good example of this is Wikipedia. Yeah, everybody can use it. It's completely free. Um, and some people can opt in to donate money to Wikipedia, but it's not a requirement. Fourth example would be open source projects. Okay, so in those situations, MySQL is a database company. That's a business uh, uh, example in, in this case. Um, you have a community of people. They're creating a product. It's free to all to use. And then companies can opt to pay for additional support services. So I get the database for free. But if I want to have some expertise in how to actually use it, then I need to pay. Yeah. So the third type of model is somebody else pays, okay? Um, and you typically drive that kind of model when you want to maximize the number of users. You want to have the largest possible number of users that you can get. And typically, uh, your users are very unwilling to pay. So obviously, the biggest, the most successful business that employs this model is Google. I, as a consumer, have never paid to use Google, and nor will I ever. But businesses are advertising on Google to the tune of about $40 billion a year or something like that, right? So that's a very successful business model. It's a subset of the advertising business model. The vast number of consumer-oriented sort of networking type organizations like Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, anybody like that, obviously completely free to use, all features, whatever you want, advertising pays the bills. One model that's extremely frequently overlooked is sponsorship. Apps for Good, for example, has got a sponsorship business model. The schools can use Apps for Good for free, yeah? and businesses sponsor Apps for Good so that that can happen. The reason why they do that is because it allows them to address a maximum number of schools, number one, number two. There are far more businesses willing to sponsor than there are schools willing to pay. It just results in an overall better outcome. And finally, also very frequently overlooked, you know, it's government. Government pays for 45% of everything that happens in this country. Yeah, it's probably the largest single source of money if one looks at it like that in the world. Right? So Tim Berners-Lee creates the internet, gets paid for by the government. Wonderful business model. Definitely works. So in summary, I think the key thing to understand is there is really no free lunch. Somebody has to pay, always. The question is just, who should pay? Is that all users? Is that some users? Or is that just somebody else? OK, and that needs some thinking through. Um, and there are no quick answers. As I said before, you, know, you have to choose a bit more wisely. It's not a five-minute discussion around, should it be free or paid, and should it be 99 cents or 3.99 or something like that. That's not the way to think about a business model. Thank you. <laughs>